We do not know why we are here. We do not know who built the silent and why we are underground. We only know the world outside our sanctuary is death. If you boil the pact down to one rule, it's do not say you want to go outside. Or you will go outside. Don't you ever think about the world beyond the silo? What if what we see is not what's out there? Down a mechanical. There's always someone who has a theory about the silo. I need to find out the truth. I found something that might have hold the answers to a lot of questions. You have to stay quiet. And keep your head down. Are you willing to give everything you have for this? The clock is running. There isn't much time left. This is a threat to order in the silo. I don't care about order. What about finding out the truth? Some mysteries, they're best left unsolved. Uh, hello and welcome to the periodic <laughs> table of awesome. God damn you, Quinny, you dropped out and now I have to reorganize <laughs> stuff because Peter's name's in the wrong area and Jill's oh, name's no. in the wrong area. <laughs> I'm blaming all that one on you, but that's got nothing to do with this. Yeah, that's it. That's actually it, Quinny. You're going outside. You need to clean yeah. up the stream. I, but I, I hear you did. say you wanted to go yeah. out. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I didn't go I didn't, outside. Definitely, I didn't say that. I don't I have any... I don't have any wool. Where Can am you... I going to find the wool for cleaning all of the things? Uh, I don't know where you're going to find the wool. Wait, there we go. Now you can read both Peter and Jill's name. There we go. Oh, good. good. Technical I'm difficulties, sorry. no <laughs> such thing around here. <laughs> Hello, it's Tuesday night and we're back. We're back. It's Tuesday. Yay. And Yay. Today we're Yay. not talking about uh, Angelina Jolie's son, Shiloh. We're talking about the Apple TV <laughs> series, Silo. <laughs> Mm. Um, isn't that also a, a song by Neil Diamond or <laughs> something? Yeah. Shiloh, you always came. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, the, the, yes. then it, tonight's going to be a weird night. Tonight is going to be a weird night, although I do have to do a little bit of adjustment just to help Peter be seen because currently she's, oh. she's a little bit behind every, everything. We'll just move that over. Did you hide bit. her behind Rebecca Ferguson? No, no. Did Rebecca, you hide her behind Rebecca Ferguson's shifting accent? No, yes. That was, that was the problem. Rebecca Ferguson's shifting accent. Um, um, good. Excellent. Funnily, that, that's, um, that's actually on the menu at a bar I go to. <laughs> Rebecca, can I have two glasses of Rebecca Ferguson <laughs> shifting accent? And um, they go, sure, that will be nine dollars ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Ferguson, where are you from? Lots of different places. <laughs> anyway, where is she from? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure she's Swedish. Okay, right. Yeah. Cool. I love that that's that's our main bone of contention with this series. We're going to talk about this. What we want, we want to know is where is Rebecca Ferguson from? <laughs> if only we had that information somewhere, somehow. Yeah, possibly IMDb. <laughs> Who the fuck yeah, knows? Like the internet. We, you know, Rebecca Ferguson. We do not why she know why she is here. We do not know why she was in the silo. We do not know why everything outside her accent is weird. We do not know when it would be safe to go anywhere near her accent. But we know it is not this day. Uh, well, good. And also, hello to everyone. Feel like we've come out of the gate really mean at Rebecca Ferguson. Uh, we have, but <laughs> yeah. also, I mean, she's the producer of this show. She can handle it. She's got a thick skin. What are you she talking about? Like, there's, there's, yeah, there's she's, some... well, she's one of the producers of season two, anyway. There's oh, someone producing credit. There's someone on she... this show called Common. So I think if we're going to be attacking someone. I think uh, you want us to punch down on the common man, is that what you're saying? 
Yes, why not? This is not what we're doing. First of all, can we just acknowledge the chat? Hello, chat. You're all Hello, here. Chat. This is what, Hi, this chat. Is, we love you, chat. This is the content you come for, but also uh, we're going to be talking about Silo from Apple TV, which we've finished mm. the first season recently. So now mm. we can all watch it. And now have we all done the homework? Yes. We have. Excellent. Um, you, you watched the last episode last night, didn't you, Jim? I did, I did. Yeah. Just fucking sneaking it in there. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, I had a busy weekend. I couldn't, yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't binge it. Come on, no, could no, he, no, I re- respect. Could he too be honest? We've all done some of that. I've watched a, lo- a few <laughs> episodes, and then I may have watched, read the Wikipedia on the entries in the last couple <laughs> just to catch up. No, 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 Dion, that's you. You are the the Wikipedia person here. <laughs> you love a bit of the old Wiki TV. Yeah, <laughs> Wiki TV, great. It's a tricky one to binge. It's a little bit dense for a binge. It is. I think the first two episodes were a good watch back to back. Um, mm, the rest yeah. of it, I did tend to break up because it's, it's a little bit boring. I'm gonna put it out there. The middle was a bit boring. I mean, <laughs> for a series that has hundreds and hundreds of different levels within a silo that is supposed to be inhabiting a whole civilization, and there is a very stra- like stratified difference between those who are closer to the top and those who are all the way down the bottom. It was very samey. Mm. Mm. Like, I feel like mm. they had a, a three-story set and that was what they had. <laughs> well, I mean, you know that that's how it works. <laughs> like, I looked at that and I thought, that's a very smart piece of design to go, what do we need to shoot this show? We need three stories of, of set. Um, yeah. you know, one big sweeping staircase, enough back rooms and, and back hallways, mm. and then some undergroundy bits for down underneath. Yeah, where did like, they shoot all the things for uh, Interstellar and for the uh, Loki TV series? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those, that, that place with the spiral concrete bit. Yeah, that'll do. We'll shoot there. Mm-hmm. But I like that. I actually, like, there's a part of me that, you know, somebody who's sort of worked in around films and everything who went, that's smart. That's clever. How do you, how do you show a gigantic silo? Just have one fucking floor. And anytime somebody goes up the stairs, cut to the bit of them going up the stairs again. Simple, simple and effective. Sure. Or, you know, you can effectively, you know, make someone chase through a crowd by having them run around the camera in a circle. (laughs) Yes, I mean, and hey, that's fine too. Great filmmaking techniques on on here. Thankfully, Apple not just making computers now, learning how to do film. Fantastic. <laughs> I want to say I, I like I quite enjoyed it. Um, I quite enjoyed pretty much the whole series. Um, and I the the as you say, Jill, the first couple of episodes are a pretty good solid opener. Mm. Um, and then I think it's episode three that it hits this really tense um, episode where they're trying to fix a generator? Or is that episode two? Is that two or three? No, I think that was three. And that was the one where I was like, because I was watching it with my partner and and I'd watched the first episode and I enjoyed it and then I sort of watched the second episode with her and I was like, okay, I'm trying to explain where we're up to with it. And the, the third one hooked us right in because it was fucking tense as shit Mm. and it was like oh shit this is there's a lot going on this is this you know has a lot of really high stake stuff and from that point onwards i was like okay i'm on board for this and i went on the ride went on the ride what what is this the ride about yeah quitty speaking of rides Okay, Thanks, Peter. Um, uh, wait, do we do, do we have any music? I'm not going to do. Oh, I'm no, not going to do it in a floating accent. <laughs> oh. Um, does, does everybody want Rebecca Ferguson's questionable accent? <laughs> um, sure. Okay. Give me, give me Rebecca well, Ferguson, but like you know where you come from. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll what I'll do. I'll start American. Mm. I'll shift into Irish partway through, yeah. then I'll come back through British a little bit, and then I'll end. Fuck only knows where. No, 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 no. Okay. Fuck all. Fuck all this sort of roving stuff. Just do the the native one, Swedish, please. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Quinny, do Swedish. And if you do Swedish Chef, oh fuck you! That count. was exactly where I was going. We're just so you know, you know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Um, do I have music for this, or is it just? Oh no, no, you're definitely. Uh, you, you, people who are familiar with games may recognise the soundtrack <laughs> to this, which may return in another TV show of post-apocalyptic. Oh, but that's oh. alright. Why not? Are you making comment on it? This this TV show is similarity to another would I franchise. Do, would I do that sort of thing? Yes. Yes, you would. Yeah. Uh, okay. The synopsis is war. War <laughs> never changes. Oh, sorry. That's a that's a that's a different thing. Sorry. <laughs> In a dystopian future where a community exists in a giant silo that extends hundreds of stories underground, 10,000 people live in a society bound by regulations they believe are meant to protect them. Hmm? They do not know why they are here. They do not know who built this alley. They do not know why everything at the alley is as it is. They do know, not know when it will be safe to go outside. They only know that today, or it is not this day. <sighs> Please direct all uh, complaints to Quinny at the periodic table of awesome. <laughs> While he it looks up, really good. And then it just went <laughs> oh, just became shit. I know. If yeah. the yeah. Swedish <laughs> chef was going to read a a I, I, synopsis I, I, as opposed to an actual Swedish person who would be incredibly offended <laughs> right now, oh, I oh, also wait. have no idea still what the show is about. So. Okay, in a dystopian future where a community exists in a giant silo that extends hundreds of stories underground, ten thousand people live in a society bound by regulations. They believe are meant to protect them. They do not know why they are here. They do not know who built the silo. They do not know why everything outside the silo, e silo is as it is. They do not know when it will be safe to go outside. They only know it is not this day. Okay. There's, um, there's the translation. Didn't discontinue solo? <laughs> solo. <laughs> Can I just ask one question? Didn't Sweden join NATO today? <laughs> well, so after that little fucking effort, they're going to be right back out again. And so technically, we are probably at war with NATO. <laughs> Good. <laughs> excellent. I thought that was an excellent Swedish chef, Quinny. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right. Uh, and so the chicky in the basket. <laughs> uh, the chicky. It's the chocolate in the moon. <laughs> <laughs> or, or what's it? What's it of the Swedish chef's real name, Megan. 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 Yeah, Megan. Yep. Megan. yep. Things yeah. that I would expect only Queenie to know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How does Sweet, it Sweden to Solo is the question. F thank you, Adski. I hear that Sweden are no longer neutral after that. <laughs> <laughs> Their flag has gone from a positive to a negative. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Adski. It says no Queenies. On their borders. Yeah. Quinny's, Quinny's banned from Ikea. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> How do I get my meatballs now? <laughs> on the black market, which exists <laughs> in Silo. Let's get back to Silo. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. Try out here, man. I believe it's actually Silo with two little O's, uh, the dots above the O. <laughs> <Silo>. Silo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, I'm sorry, Peter. This is... I'm enjoying this much more than I did the show. <laughs> <laughs> I started watching this fairly early on when it started to not not as soon as it started to drop because I looked at the, the thumbnail and that looked like a little bit serious to me right now. Like, okay. you know, you, you guys know that I'm not like super into paying attention to heavy stuff at the moment. Um mm. but forever. Ever. I mean, you know, sometimes, just not in the last 10 years or so. <laughs> Definitely since 2020. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I, I think what kept me watching was while the episodes were, I thought, a bit of a slow burn, they did structure the um, uh, cliffhangers uh, fairly well. And I think that's kind of what got me into it at the end you know the question question format lots of question raised questions raised at the beginning and lots of you know 
I want to find out if I'm right about my theories mm. about what's going on. I thought mm. Rashida Jones, who I love, was kind of going to carry me more through the series than ended up being the case for reasons that we'll discuss later. Um, but yeah, I think I think kind of what kept me going was the, that mystery aspect and the and and that you know cliffhangery format. Uh, I did get really confused though throughout about the timeline. Was anyone else super confused about the timeline? Nope. Um, nope. Yeah. <laughs> Which timeline? What do you mean? What are you talking about? You talking about the timeline? Well, about, about like, each episode. I was kind of confused about how long it had been since she had kind of taken up the sheriff's. Yeah, job. actually, because I think there was like a point towards the end of the series where she's like, "I've been doing this for a year," and I'm like, "Huh." Yeah, I thought this it feels you know, like it's all happened in the first week. No, yeah, it's because I I don't remember that bit. I I'm thought it was all very much. Maybe it's because they're using casino logic. Like the people in the silo yeah. do not actually understand how long they have been in there, and they've all only been in there for about a month. Well, I think it was a year between the events of the first episode and the events of the second episode, and then I oh, think okay, right. after right. that, it all unfolded within okay. days. That makes because sense. of that jumping around between what she'd been investigating before and what she'd been investigating after, mm. I, you know, I just kept getting a little bit lost in it, and that took me out of. What I was guess going yeah, on. because the, the the time timeline that we kind of interact with is in episode one. There's the sheriff's wife who we kind of follow her beginnings of investigation, and then she goes outside, and then you skip a year or thereabouts. And then the sheriff also does his investigation. And then, and then stuff happens. And then stuff happens. And then another sheriff does their investigation. <laughs> but yeah, like, but because that in that first year, we're not sure how often that sheriff interacted with um, the, uh, the new sheriff. You, wait, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> With, with Rebecca Ferguson. Yeah, it's, 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 Juliet. We're using yeah, a lot of Juliet, the phrase, thank you. I, I have drew the sheriff there. around here. And the, the important thing to notice is that in this show there are two sheriffs. There is <laughs> there is a there is a, a an African American sheriff and a yeah. Swedish Holston. Uh, Holston sheriff. And Juliet. Um yeah. and then there are also uh, deputy sheriffs and some law enforcement, and then there's also the secret law enforcement. Um, mm. so the judiciary. I mean, yeah, and then there's like the mayors, and then there's a bunch of different departments, and a whole bunch. It's very strange, and it's it's doesn't exactly lend itself to easy explanation as to where or how this all works. It's just more like pick it up as you go, and figure out like you're learning as you as kind of um, the main character Juliet, like, is. Juliet is learning like how does the silo Hi. work. I felt like the structure of the silo was pretty straightforward to me and I was only half watching this show. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's exactly, it's like Snowpiercer, like the people at the top of the yes. silo are more important than the people at the bottom. The only difference between this and Snowpiercer is they're not eating babies at the bottom. <laughs> uh, There's no Soylent Green in this one. Yes. No, but isn't there a suggestion yes. at one point that yes. the people at the top do think the people at the bottom? Like, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I like that little nod, which is kind of like, yeah, we're aware of the snow pierceriness of All, this. <laughs> although, technically speaking, they are eating the people who have died because they plant them in the garden levels and then they eat the fruit and produce yes. off those. Things. But aren't we all, Dion? Yes, That's yes. Fine. Now, haven't you ever put blood and bone on your roses? Yeah, not no. mine, though. <laughs> No, but I put it on, get out in the garden. But I put it on my toast. Is that right? Uh, maybe. No. Um, it's full of marabone strokes. jelly. Different strokes. <laughs> different they strokes. Say. Absolutely. Um, uh, look, uh, what's – sorry, one of the things – I'm trying to keep this one on track tonight uh, to, to go there. We're almost halfway through again, and we haven't really seemed to get around it. What were the things that people really liked about it? Well, as Peter said, the the, the mystery element – that was to me the thing that you know, episode three had the great hook, the real, real kind of you know, um, massive tension moment, and then from then on, it was for me going okay, the hook of what's the next mystery, um, you know, wh who wh who killed George, who what are the what are the next was, things that they're going to find? Was George actually killed? 
all of those kind of but did you like i found that like i enjoyed the mystery part of it too but i did find that it took a long time to get to the fucking monkey and when you did get to the <laughs> monkey you're like this is not a monkey this is a painting of a monkey this is a paper mache gorilla um <laughs> Whereas some of the things that I think they could have spent some more time, which would have been a little bit more satisfying that they revealed at the end, were kind of spack fill it over in in side character ways, which I found just slightly frustrating. And especially like, can I, I won't say it until we get to the spoilery thing, but I was really disappointed that they gave us a teaser about lower down and then they ended up doing yeah. a reveal about higher up. And I was like, no, the interesting story is below everything. <laughs> like, yeah. why are we not going back down there? Like, why are you focusing up here? We want to go back down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there was, admittedly, there was a lot of time spent with, like, uh, the doctor, Ian Glenn, and there were a couple of times I was like, I don't actually care that much about his story. I know it ties into her sure. story and it's really important, but I don't know, there were there are elements of some some kind of plots and characters that I was like, ah, I'm much more interested in the bigger mystery. Yeah. And there are a few times where it felt like it was kind of spending more time on things that I was like, I don't actually care about that. I really want to know about the big mystery. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's probably a way to do that, to explore characters um, and and their story, as well as also serving the the mystery and the plot around that. Because I felt like, four episodes in the middle were, were quite flabby and boring. Um, it was really only the first three and the last three that kind of kept me interested. The only reason why I kept going was because we were going to review the bloody show tonight. So I'm like, I've got to watch the whole thing. And I was getting quite bored in the middle. And then by the end of the last yeah. three episodes, where you're starting to get a little bit more revealed about um, the the political infrastructure of the silo that that was when it was getting really interesting. And then like the final reveal at the end. And I'm like, Oh, why couldn't it have been this punchy the whole way through? Yeah. Mm. And I think that's a, like it, it, it set up a lot of questions. It didn't necessarily answer all of the questions because it wants to mm. give itself leeway to answer some of the questions later. I think the questions that did go answered as opposed to the questions that didn't go answered could have been a little frustrating at some points. Um, and the questions that were being kind of answered throughout the film, you know, the things that were, were being um, um, revealed around the political structure, for example, they weren't really the big ticket items, so it did start to get a little bit frustrating. Yeah. Um, mm. You knew that, the, like, the big question that had been set up the one particular big question, you knew that that wasn't going to be answered until the end. Uh, but I think that yeah. there was still kind of a lot going on that you were like, oh, but what about this thing? And what about that thing? And did they just kind of forget to tie up this thing? Or like, mm. is this all for like, let's hope that we get another season. Well, they probably with Apple, they know they're getting another season. But it doesn't, it didn't have that, that, that continuous sense of, of tension in the mystery that something like Severance did, yes. for example. Mm. And and I didn't scream at the end. Um, <laughs> no. I did in Severance. In fact, I went, eh, that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that's an interesting oh. one because I know early on we were talking about you know the when you enter into the series, do you have a bit of a a preconception or a pre idea as to what the the big mystery is? Um, and we will talk about that in spoilery bits. But like, how close does did everybody get to their their initial thoughts. Oh. I would say I was like 95% on. Yeah, me yeah, too. Right. I was like. Because it's. It was I, an observational thing. It, it's it's not twitched. well concealed and that feels deliberate. Exactly. But, like if, yeah. you, if you're watching the screen, like I was in yeah. the first two episodes, yeah. you kind of pick up what it is and you're like, oh. <laughs> and then at the so end, then like, the real yeah. question is why. Yeah. Yeah. Wanting that, so the real yes. question is why, and that's the question that doesn't really get resolved. Exactly. No. Mm. I think that's kind of the frustrating thing about this situation is that I, one of the, well, the first thing I had watching it on behalf of the people that I was watching in it is why are they all so complicit <laughs> and complacent mm. with this stuff? Because there is something fundamentally wrong. Um, and then also I was just kind of 
<clears throat> looking at all of this going, oh, th there has to be something else around here for some reason of what this is. Um, there has to be an underlying me, but the tail, like we've all gotten there. I think I was watching it and I got there as a viewer very quickly, like going, okay, there's got to be some reason outside. We need to <clears throat> figure that out. What's going on out yeah. there? We need to get there and like holding it off and trying to unravel the the mystery of where the silo came from and how come it got scrubbed from records and, you know, all that kind of stuff yeah. was just like, after a while, I was like, that's two, three episodes worth, but you've made mm. it stretch out too long. And yeah. now I'm a bit bored again. Um, I think see, I never section if there was a little bit more about the history of the silo being revealed in mm. the, of the series that probably could have kept me more interested. Mm. Yeah, the even if it's just only not to to the people within the silo, like if it's just something we're being let in on, that would have been kind of fascinating. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think. It it probably seeding more of the relics, seeding more of the the ideas because they're introduced concepts like you know uh, somewhere in the middle there they introduce the idea of the flame keepers, and I'm like that's interesting. What's that? Oh, yeah. you're not going to tell us. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> cool. I guess I'll just go over here then. We're never involved with the antagonists, so we don't get to see their side of the argument so to speak mm. like it's all from the protagonist perspective so i think if maybe that middle section or some other episodes were dedicated to focusing on the characters that were in the antagonist position then we might have gotten a bit more information about the silo and more interesting stuff that way True, i can only I... assume that they just didn't want to reveal that much information because they want to kind of do that down the line but then that's when it starts to feel real long yeah. Mm. yeah. Though I will say oh, that sorry. without without you can sorry, you can still do that part of the story without revealing the face of who's actually involved in what. Mm. Yeah. I did think that they did a pretty good job of giving a little bit more depth to some of the bad guys, the the antagonists though, like mm. um Mr. Sims, like in so many ways could be the cartoon Gestapo guy, but they gave him enough depth to kind of go, okay, so he's got more than, like he is a, a caring father and, and mm. um, has other dogs in the race rather than just being the person who's, yeah, a jackboot on your neck. Mm. Um, but, yeah. So I feel like that they, spend, was, they spend a lot of time with those kind of higher level political intricacies and moving stuff where I was really interested in the black market and the lower stuff, which is like there's obviously put in this, as it is, is like there's no low technology slash no technology allowed for most of the residents in the silo. Why is like the why of that never really gets um, explained. But there, there's obviously a huge subplot in there of like black market. How do they get around that? How do they circumvent these things mm. that everyone is doing? But they don't they don't bother with those stories. They just deal with all of this stuff like more at the other side. Like, but why are they keeping it? Mwah, 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 mustache. Uh, we're not going to tell you. Yes, mustache <laughs> twirling, and it's like okay, but you don't explain why. There's no good reason. I did like that that world building of what the silo is and how does it work. I found really interesting and it was mm. like disappointing that we didn't get to see a yeah. little bit more of that. Like the idea that you've kind of got to take a day off work to go and visit your family yeah. you know, in the lower silo because it takes so long to walk down there. Yeah, because there's um, no lifts. Because there's no lifts. Why is there no lift? We're or, not going to tell you. Or there's curious um, <laughs> runners who run messages between the levels and I was like, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. But but also there's still somehow the ability to send messages in other ways um, mm. because uh, the character of Martha um, or Walker or to, um, is able to get messages around and you're like, okay, and there is a computer system and mm. you're like, okay, does the computer system allow messaging? Yeah. Um, like it's, it's connected. Uh, so, you know, what is that doing? And all the, there's a lot of questions. And I like, well, I like, but I also found it weird that, you know, this is a society that's been told you're not allowed to have lifts. You know, you have to walk. It's yeah. one of the rules. But also computers are fine as long as you use them in a very specific way. Yeah. Like it's, it's the, 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 the justifying answers to the questions that get posed throughout the series. It's, it's a very poor kind of explanation. At least it left me unsatisfied. 
You're dissatisfied, really. Mm. And the interesting thing is, if you want to know any of the answers, you can go out and buy the books. Um, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. it's based on a book? Yes. So ah. many years ago at Supernova, we had a, a guest by the name of Hugh Howie, um, who was one of our lovely authors, and he wrote a series of books that were called the Wool series. Mm. Um, wool being the thing that is used to clean when you go outside. Um, so yeah, uh, I didn't know that this was based on those until I saw something commenting saying, oh, they're finally adapted wool. And I'm like, fuck what? Holy <laughs> shit. Um, and yeah, so there's a whole series of short stories and novellas and stuff that are all set in the world of the silo. Um, so you can go and explore further if you want to. I don't know. Well, apparently there's some pretty massive liberties taken with it and change yeah. quite a bit, but yeah. And you know, good news, bad news, however you take it. Um, it has been greenlit for a second series and um, they are filming it right now. Um, <laughs> and because all of their scripts were written pre the strike, mm. they're not actually being affected by the writer's strike at the moment, which is, I Maybe guess. Maybe affected by other strikes soon. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and <laughs> we'll see how long that one lasts. <laughs> um well, do you? I feel. I feel like there's kind of a lot that we can go into spoilery. Should mm. we kind of? Yeah. Raise yes, please. And, let's let's raise this. Is Sally worth that? your time? Should you watch it? And how should you watch it? And should you watch it in the way that after watching the first episode, you need to write down what your theories are about the end of the first <laughs> season in an envelope, and then watch the rest of it, and then open them up and stand in front of people and go, "See, I told you. I picked it straight away." <laughs> Um, I like that idea. I also shout out to Predakanga for his idea that the reason that they didn't allow, allow lifts so that people didn't get fat and lazy. Um, it, you know, living in a, a silo, you would be sedentary as fuck. I also probably think it's to separate the different classes. Yeah. Not make it easy for the levels to mingle, particularly mm. the lower levels to mingle with the upper levels. But you know, I, I, I feel like this is the kind of stuff that surely they'd have to properly reveal. But we never saw anything. We didn't see silo schools. We didn't see silo universities. We didn't see silo nightclubs. Like, where's all the silo bits? Where's all the fun? Where's the silo music hall? That's actually All we not, saw was a silo a running race. Point. You know, it's like there's no youth in this. Well, I mean, considering that, you know, birthing is, is yeah. objectively controlled. Um, yeah, you don't really see any sort of um, silo culture. Uh, yeah, culture or um, what's the freaking word I'm looking for? Ah, you can... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I get it. it yes, and already people are starting to mention. I see in the chat there stuff about Fallout. Yes, it feels very much like fucking Fallout. Yeah, but it's very cool. A fucking sp- elephant in the room. Specifically, what goes on in the vault, which is not really what you give a shit about in Fallout, which is strange. It's like, uh, for, well, you know, the vaults are just good places where you score cool loot and then you learn about fun stories that kind of happen. And in this one, it's just kind of like, here's the story about the vault. It's all about the vault and what happened in the vault. And I'm like, no, I want to go outside and shoot monsters in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I I like the idea of going, you know, because in Fallout there are hundreds of vaults around the place. And I love the idea of what if one of them, you know, just got locked in forever and they just went fucking weird. Yeah, I mean, it was like, a huge vault. As I'm sa- as I'm saying, there is like you know, Fallout TV is coming out soon this year or something. The first Sometime. season of that, so this could be an interesting double feature. If Fallout deals with the wasteland and what's happening out there, this could be a nice one of going. Oh, I ever wonder what happened inside the vault? It's kind of like this one. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. right, right, right. Um, I was going to say, drop drop a rating in the chat. Use that one hundred thing so I can find go, it. Go recreation. That's the fucking word I was trying. Recreation. to Oh, <laughs> what do they do for recreation? <laughs> um, they bang. They, they bang just, a lot. Uh, they just because they can't have kids, so they're just like yeah. They just they're work. Only in authorized relationships. Yeah, well, that's a weird one too, isn't it? Mm. They just work and then they eat and then that's all they do and then they shit themselves to death because where, like, I mean, I love the fact that the people keeping the engine of the silo going are very important. I'm like, where are the plumbers? Yeah. What's mm-hmm. going on with the plumbers? Where, where are the S Ben warriors that are actually making <laughs> the, like, you know, where does that go? Anyway, uh, I give it 70. <laughs> fucking wow. Um, you made a meal of that, my friend. Oh, um, yum, yum, yum. 
Yes, <laughs> seven, 70 because I I really liked it. It's very well made and I liked how earnestly everyone's going for it in there, but it dulled the fuck out of me at places. And by the end I was like, oh, you could have just done that by midway through the season and still kept going with all of this. Like, yeah, sorry. Hopefully no, the okay. season two will grab me. I mean, it's it's no Apple Masterpiece C. Season three, all three seasons are out now. You can watch them. Um, <sighs> he gets paid every time he says that. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> By himself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Dion. Excellent money for Star Wars toys. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, leave me alone. Jillaroo. I'm going to go D8. Sorry, you, you broke up when you said that, so I didn't hear the actual number. Oh, 68. 68, 68. thank you. Yes. Um, I quite liked the the production of the series. It all looked very lived in, and mm. um, I thought, you know, the creative with the set and the the costuming and all the sorts of that stuff, and uh, yeah, the acting was very good. But yeah, it just kind of lost me in the middle. wasn't super keen to check it out. I could have watched the first two and then just skip to the last one mm. to see how it ended. To be honest, but. Yeah. Must be, the end. Must be, you're quite right there, Joe. I think it must be very tedious for the production designers to come up with an idea of something and then they go, no, that doesn't, that doesn't work. You can't have that. And it's like, oh, fuck, okay. Um, well, uh, this kind of door. And they're like, no, that has a button. We can't have a button. Yeah, everything has to be physical. Everything has to be cogs or whatever. Okay, I wrote this on paper. No, paper is a small resource. It's not very much paper. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Actually, though, I did yeah. like some of that stuff. I love the idea that, you know, something like a sheaf of papers is actually worth a lot of to, to, to people because you can't be having trees. No. Um, well, you can, so, but they're yeah. growing apples and they're important. You can't cut down an yeah, apple tree to can't... grow a have like pulping machines and all sorts of stuff to make paper. It's very difficult. Hmm. So books and shit like that are, are super valuable and paper is, is, is a limited resource. So that kind of world building, I really dig. Anyway, Pete. Yeah, I, um, I think 70 is fair for, for me. I watched the entire series before I knew that we were going to talk about it. So I, I got to the end willingly. Um, and, you know, while there were kind of bits in the middle that did drag for me and I, I did I, I thought of I felt like it came fairly slowly out of the gate as well um I wasn't really fully engaged with it till a few episodes in and even then it was like I said just that you know the cliffhanger setups that kind of kept me coming back to the next episode being like oh I'll just kind of see how they resolved that one um I think you know like I keep saying like the world building has so much potential and I love a good bit of post-apocalyptic spec fiction um, and, you know, really thinking about how those worlds would look, particularly if they've got specific rules like, you know, no lifts and no mechanics and no magnifiers under a certain, you know. Mm. <laughs> I find all of that stuff really interesting, but I, I agree with you guys that I didn't see as much of it that I would have liked to in the series and frankly rebecca ferguson's accent did not bug me at all <laughs> look i just took it off, off a single point been, every um, time it changed i haven't been uh, asking people to go out and watch like i haven't been recommending it heavily because i can kind of see that while i enjoyed a lot of aspects of it uh, unless you're really into that kind of thing it could, it could be a little bit of a stop yeah i brought it up with my day i said we were chatting about it tonight and he's like, oh, yeah, I watched the first two episodes and then I got bored. And I'm like, oh, well, here's what happened at the end. He's like, all right, cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, he's like, oh, maybe I'll watch it. I'm like, very boring in the middle. But <laughs> I, now see, I told I, you the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it uh, apparently a lot more than most of the rest of you. For, for me, it was an 80. I, I actually, oh. I was I was into it pretty much all the way through. I love the the design. I love the the world. Um and I wanted to explore that world and I wanted to know more. Yeah, the like the ending, I, I found myself going, fuck, yeah, I really want to know a lot more about what happens down or what happens in a lot of other places. And I could feel like there are a lot of threads that were not dealt with. And 
as I was getting to the end of that episode, I'm like, oh, motherfucker, we're really not getting many answers here, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoyed it. And um, there were there were a few times where I was like, wow, Rebecca Ferguson, the, the sheriff lady, Juliet, she was not making friends with anybody. And I was like, oh, dick, difficult person to like. And, and I think I always like making smart decisions. No, no. Oh. Yeah. I liked her because she was an asshole. Oh, she was, <laughs> but there, there were a few times I was like, you know, there are different ways to handle this that would probably have gotten you more answers than you got. Um, but also, yeah, she was very, very smart. Um, yeah. So, yeah, look, I, I really enjoyed it a lot, but also I kept on kind of doing that thing that you were talking about, Dion, of going, well, it feels like Fallout, so I'm yes. going to... I, I feel a little the, bit at home here. Where are the red roaches? Oh, they're there. Why, Don't you worry about why are there not any uh, people coming in from the outside? Where are the raiders and the super mutants? Yeah. Where, well, there's, there's well, more let's time Let's jump to into spoilers and where's, discuss that for Where's you. Three Dog yes. Radio broadcasting across Apocalyptia? Uh, anyway. that's, that's all yeah. in season two. Yeah, where's the Forex Bowl? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fuck Terry. Man. Fuck Terry. Uh, he was one of the cleaners, the very first cleaner that went out. Oh, he, oh, he would have been. He yeah, totally would have been. Uh, he had his Terry telling cloth. <laughs> <laughs> he was the <laughs> first cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. And he went, Why do I have to go outside? And someone at the back said, Fuck Terry. And then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a very, very distinct kink. That's a very specific, and it's a very specific reference. Yeah, which I do. For those two hundred and something people who came to that panel. No, but I found (laughs) many years ago. I found the recording that I had. I found a recording of it. Oh my god! Yeah, I know. It's not a great recording. Let's be honest. Put it on the tubes. Let's be honest. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's there, but it's funny. That's all I'm going to say. That's the main um, thing. And you drinking beer the way oh, that you did. Just don't, Warm, horrible beer. Don't even need to go there. Just mm. say, if you if you convince me to do something on a stage, I might just do it. Yeah. Um, no, might. Eh, <laughs> uh, well, the next year I ate paste. Um, yeah, technically, yeah, we uh, do we want to say the don't say it clip or do you want the Freedom Day clip? Um. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Whichever look, one you feel like. Oh, I reckon Freedom Day. This shows you a bit of the culture that's happening in the silo, which is that everyone's really excited to, to, to have a running race for Freedom Day, which sounds very North Korean. But anyway, we'll come back <laughs> to the, the, uh, the spoilery section. Six minutes past six o'clock <laughs> on this day, 140 years ago. That is the moment we regained our freedom. Rashida Jones looking pensively at a bunch of lanterns that are floating upwards. And as I was saying, how dare they have open flame within a controlled environment? And isn't that using up too much oxygen? Am I reading too much into this? Is the silo not 100% sealed like it should be? It's supposed to be an arc, uh, much like a spaceship, and nothing can get into it or you might die. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's all fake. Maybe there's no real reason. Maybe they're part of a giant government experiment and we just So are these all of the theories that you had, Dion? What, 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 what were your main theories? I better put up the spoilery section knowing that we are technically oh, yeah, this yeah. is spoilery. This is major spoilers now. So if you if haven't you're, watched yes, watching this. Yeah, if you haven't watched the uh, the show, um I'd say please do. Like, you know, you go there, but like also it will take a while. Like you don't have to like do it all at once or revisit and come back. But yeah, I recommend sitting down, watch the first episode. Write some ideas down, put them in an envelope, and then you can see whether or not you're right. I think it is a, that's a fun way to do it because, yeah, you you may well be 
Right on the money. And by the way, the chat's already gone completely fucking spo- full spoiler. <laughs> full They're like, yeah, spoilers. what happens outside the silo? What happens in the bottom? So, you know, right. I the, mean, this is good. Like, as long as we're, we're across all this, yeah. Like, I had put I had put down that there, that there were more silos, and that um, it was. I thought it was uh, still going to be toxic outside, but I said that there would be more silos, whereas uh, Fell had said. Uh, that the suit poisoned people. Me too. Yeah, so I thought they, it was the basically suit. they poisoned people in the suit. Like outside was beautiful and wonderful, and and everything was absolutely fine. But if you went outside to clean, they just poisoned your air supply. That's and, exactly what I thought too. Yeah, yeah. See, after the first episode, when I watched uh, Rashida Jones look at the video, and then when she goes out and the, the exact, exact same, same bird birds formation, fly past. Yeah. I'm like, it took me oh, a while. that's fake. Yeah. Yeah, That's the I, fake thing. No fake. it took me a while to pick up on the 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 repeating birds, um, and I was like, "Oh, god damn it!" Yeah, um, I'm like, "What's the odds of that happening?" <laughs> I have a th- I have another theory though that I want to throw it out to you guys before we get to it in season two because this is something that we don't know yet, that hasn't been explored. Remember how mm-hmm. they went all the way down the bottom and then they found the drilling machine and then there's a water like lake down there. Yep. Mm-hmm. My theory is is that that lake is actually about six inches deep. And Same. And they're so panicky about it, but that's where they find a door. So they went, that, that's my theory for the, the low Well, part. he does, he did end up saying the water didn't yeah. end up being a problem. Yeah, not yeah. a problem, but they didn't explain how it wasn't a problem. But yeah. I'm like, hey, it's actually only about six inches deep because she falls in and it'll be a huge panic thing. Oh, no. And then she'll just sit up and be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, figuring man. that. Yeah. See, initially I kind of had a vague thought that maybe the whole thing was going to be a big social experiment. Oh. Like, um, I, you know, I thought, wouldn't it have been interesting if this was actually, you know, a fully observed social experiment where they were saying, okay, you, you're going to live in this place and it's going to be a multi-generational thing. And the reason that they were being very careful of, as to breeding is because they were trying to breed um, and avoid contaminating their, their genetic um, stock for whatever experiment they were running. So basically the Divergent series. I haven't watched it, so I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> no, you no. don't read young adult fiction, Quinny? What's would, wrong with you? It would be great um, if they did the, They that. made about four bloody movies of it too. And I didn't watch any of them either. <laughs> I would love it if they came out and they went, no, the silo program was started in World War II by the Nazi party and they've just been slowly trying to maintain the Aryan race. But that wouldn't go down with what we've seen in silo, would it? No, because no. there is a lot of different... Um, ethnicities down there, which is lovely. How did mm. you get one rabbit? That's the question, <laughs> isn't it? If they're not allowed to have pets in the silo, where did one rabbit come from? And you can't just have one rabbit. Yeah. There like, was never <laughs> just one rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is some of those things too, is like uh, they there's, there were cows that they were farming because in that establishing shot there was like, oh, there's a cow. Okay. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but who's eat, like if they're eating meat okay they've eaten a rabbit right where are all the rats are the rats what people are eating because there's got to be vermin of some sort and as mm-hmm. we all know in a biodiverse you know uh ecosystem you need insects and other um yeah animals like that or it just doesn't work you can't have it stops living well yeah, yeah. yeah i mean it, it it does if you're you doing do all of the things that the insects would do so if you're exactly. hand pollinating the plants for example exactly. if you're mm-hmm. tilling the soil if you're adding all of the nutrients that would go into the soil um but i did kind of assume that there were just there were like other rabbits in the farm mm. like yeah. i just thought that maybe there's just you know that's part of what is on but those also strange you know, that maybe there's more livestock Strange that you're not allowed to have pets. I mean, that's just terrible. You need pets. Mm. Like, but also, I can I can understand why they wouldn't. Because what a what a spectacular waste of food and everything like that. I mean, yes, they're great for your mental health, but uh, yeah, but not if you're so, not if you're eating the pets. <laughs> then they ain't pets, are they? <laughs> well, um, I, I also like, did have a theory that maybe it may have been a a an alien um, invasion and. Oh. Um, that uh, uh, this was actually so. De- Deputy Marns was a survivor from a, sh- a show called Falling Skies. Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and and every time that there was a shit war that you didn't get to see because it happened off screen, 
Um, oh man! They were just putting the survivors in silos. I would kind of <laughs> like I would low key be so angry, but also so happy to get some sort of resolution from that show. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> see, wouldn't that be the thing? Like, it turns out the silo is actually just this big floating tube in space. Oh. <laughs> Great, and then wow. someone eventually becomes a Kuzach Hatterak, and it's actually a low key June TV show. It's either the- that. Or it's a little bit like uh, Dark City and it's the big floating tube in space, but yeah. it's actually like a, a well, weird well, they're making gothic a, nightmare. Now they're making a June TV show called The Sisterhood, which is about the start of the Bene Gesserit, and this could be it. Maybe she is. Yeah. Because she yeah. plays. She's um, in June too. She's in June. She's the, the mother of... Um, uh, oh, yeah. My dear. Timothy Chalamet. Exactly. That's right. Um, maybe she's the first Bene Gesserit. I don't know why we're doing this. We're breaking a lot of yeah. We, we we're just fucking with a lot of stuff. Why was the ju- the judge um, sick? Like, was it That's what wasn't really explained? No, um, I thought it was played for such a big thing that the judge is sick, and uh, she was either drunk or high on a very on a drug of some description. But yeah. it was like. Is this important to the No, question? but it wasn't really. And it was only important. I mean, okay, if there's one thing that I can give the show as a as a nice thing, it wasn't afraid to take to make those decisions with characters that they had that were very big decisions. Like, oh hi, here's a character that you might like and we're gonna establish them and then they're dead. Anyway, moving on. Here's yeah. someone We're gonna hire you... David Ayello, who's, you know, a very, very, you know, yeah. great actor. Yeah. Nah, he's not gonna be around for long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it, Rashida Jones as well. I mean, I think that's hmm. maybe why it took me a few episodes to get into it because the characters that you were following in the first two episodes and that you were getting invested in didn't stay mm-hmm. around. And then you needed a couple more episodes to get invested in Juliet in order to stick with the series. And also, like, for the first however long, Tim Robbins really didn't show up. He's barely in the first four or five episodes. Yeah. Uh, no, so barely in the first four and then he becomes a much bigger character and you're like, hang on, isn't that like the famous Tim Robbins character? Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> but then he becomes very important. And you're like, oh. And, and as Dion knows, IT does in fact manage the entire world. It does. <laughs> it's. I did like yeah. the, the Tim Robbins kind of, uh, you know, is Tim Robbins a nice person? Then, oh, no, Tim Robbins is not a nice person. No, Tim thing. Robbins was always not a nice person, even yes. when he was being a nice person. Yeah. I think Tim yeah. Robbins is is very good at sinister nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's getting. A I wasn't surprised at all by that. I did I did enjoy the the explanation because mm. you know once things started getting smashed or people started discovering a bunch of different things like the cameras that were behind the mirrors and stuff. Um, I like that there was just a few throwaway lines in explanation of like, oh, you know, the, you know, they did all this and then they, you know, damaged a uh, air sensor, air sensor. Like, an air yeah. sensor that was critical. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, that's an air sensor. Okay, like, sure. In case anyone but also else, that I found that interesting that they knew what a sensor was um, yeah. because they look out on the wasteland every day through the camera that looks out to the top of the silo. Yeah. And they know that it has a lens that needs to be cleaned, but they didn't know what a camera was. And I was like, sure. Hmm. <laughs> and then it'll let have microscopes. So it makes, you know, practicing medicine very difficult. But that's, that's why you get Ian Glenn in. So his accent can change while he talks. To He's still searching for his Khaleesi somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he tried being Batman for a while. Didn't stick. That that is something else that's never explained aside from the anti-technology because we don't want people to know about the fast angle. Like, why no microscope specifically? That's a very specific rule, yeah, yeah. no magnification past a certain amount. Yeah. It feels very much like Elon Musk is running this silo. He's just making <laughs> they're just making up rules as they see them. It's like, no paper. You know? Mm. I, have, I feel to magnify. I, I just glass. feel no like we needed like one or two more reveals on these yeah. specific questions that have been set up mm. in order to kind of feel fully satisfied by the yeah. first season. It could have I gone think... faster. That's all I'm saying. Like it's, there's, mm. there's big reveals and things, but it could have gone faster and it even would have been 
fine, I think, for her to go out at the midway point and then have that ramifications continue on about what's going on in the silo after she's left or even flash back and show some of this stuff as a flashback because then you'd always have this mystery, but, but she's out. She's gone somewhere. Where did she go? Um, and it would have maybe kept that pace up a little bit because I think you're right. Good exp- like a uh, starting point where the first few episodes got some really cool bits in it good end of the series but the middle stuff was like ah bit boring bit dull i didn't have as big a problem with the middle of the series as you all like there were still enough things happening in each episode that i was like oh yeah okay interesting um you know and for me i guess i was i was getting enough drip feed of how the world worked um to keep me kind of interested in continuing to watch um but yeah i mean it it's it's a slow burn and probably could have been an eight episode series rather than 10. and i kept watching like i said i kept watching willingly i watched the entire thing like it didn't you know it wasn't Mm. so slow that i was like i'm giving up on this there was enough there for me to 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 you know remain engaged with the story Mm. and the characters even if i kind of tuned out a little bit. But the annoying thing was because of that kind of mystery question answer plot structure, you can't really tune out too much or double screen it if you're getting bored because then you kind of miss key things and then you get confused and you're like, oh, did I miss something or is this another question that they're setting up? Well, I'd, I'd missed the whole note. I'd been looking at another screen or something like that when the note about uh, have tall flowers in front of you oh my god it took her so long to figure that out jesus christ (laughs) and that's so it's like like some other kind of annoying things where i'm kind of like do you want to like think for two seconds about that no no you don't okay cool no (laughs) just just ignore that very deliberate message that he's left you and okay fine she's just a, a salt of the earth understanding fixer person who's very good with thinking about how things operate and not so good at you know inferring things <laughs> maybe that's the um, problem Preda Kanger and Karina are having a bit of a chat in the chat about um why the Pez dispenser was so uh dangerous. dangerous like and it's it's an interesting question is it because it indicated something that they hadn't seen there before like did do we not have ducks in I think the it's... silo because all they those, would be all those red objects are things because they make people curious instead of accepting accepting it's like you know if you've got things that cannot be explained that you don't understand why they exist or what purpose they have you might start looking for more things like that they yeah. one small seed to germinate and then it will just spread throughout the whole silo and everyone will want to go outside then they'll all be dead as i said it felt very <laughs> north korean you know, but, you know, just this kind of, it, I felt like it could have lent more heavily into that kind of aspect of like, no, this is not approved. Like, does everyone have to wear the same kind of clothes? Does everyone have the same sort of thing? But it's not. It's obviously got a few things from the past that are allowed to be kept and how things operate. And it would have been nice to see it get more structured as it went down the silo. So people higher got access to, to you know, more things. And people lower just had access to like bland, boring shit. I also would have liked to have seen more visible difference between the upper levels and the lower levels in terms of just lighting and everything. Because a couple of times through there, you see them using like uh, electric, electric reflectors and stuff like that to try and move light around. Um, and whether or not they're trying to take light from outside or whether or not they're, it's all just big lamps inside, I thought the idea that the lower down you got, the darker, the smellier, the hotter, the the worse it was, would have been a lot more interesting. But it didn't, I never really felt like the down deep was that much shittier than the the up top. No. Um, you know, the the actual apartments and everything like that. I mean, they clearly only had so many sets. Um, (laughs) And so your set dressing changes a little bit, but, you know, I think it would make so much more sense to see the down deep and see them fucking six to a room and it be, you know, really 
squalid and and stuff like that but it didn't it didn't get that stratification of society as much as Hmm. it perhaps should have been shown i think i'm still curious i still want to know in season two what happens when she finds access into other another silo or something and, and what's going on like i still want to know more about the mystery and i really don't want to have to read through the books or like accidentally go through that to find more out about it but then again you know, i don't know if i can sit through um another season of this pacing I'd I'd say if it, if the, if season two starts pacing itself out like season one, I'll be like, ah, wait till it's finished, and then I'll put it on the background while I vacuum or do a puzzle or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm very keen to see where they go. I mean, fascinated to know where, mm. like, because what what you know, you've seen how tightly they keep a hold on what's in their silo. Imagine if. <laughs> Like I'm just imagining in another silo, there's people sitting around in the cafeteria, and then somebody walks up to their sensor and knocks. That's yeah. like that's like fucking God coming knocking on your door. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> gonna fuck up a whole other silo. But wouldn't it be nice <laughs> if they were like different languages, so they couldn't actually understand mm. them? You know, one was a Swedish silo; they don't speak English. You know? Oh well, Julia, will have no trouble. She's fine. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, like. If you can assume that the political situation in each silo is similar to the political situation within your silo, uh, do you really think that you're going to survive knocking on another silo's door with sure. the information of what you've experienced outside of the silo? Yeah. yeah. I'd mm. like to know how much oxygen is in the suit and could she make it to the city? Because I would have gone straight mm. there. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Fuck you the know. other silos, go straight to the city. Well, I mean, didn't they give her food? No. Like, and I, I, yeah, oh. I found that that last episode was a bit disconcerting because it was like it didn't explain how stuff kind of got there. But at least I got the bit like they used better quality tape on the they seals. They used better the quality suit, tape on the seals. And, and they gave her food to take with her. Like they packed too much food and stuff. And it was like, oh, okay, I guess so. But not going to do much good if they poison the air in the suit. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, that didn't happen. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Sorry, with someone. I like Predakenga's idea. What if what if every silo has its own experiment running? Yeah. And and that then plays into my theory of of you know silos are actually just big experiments. Yes. And what if the next silo she goes to is actually a medieval silo, and then it's very much like Westworld. <laughs> what if one's well, in America the... work yeah. season yeah. two? Speaking of which, everybody <laughs> should get off the stream and jump onto Stan, where the first two episodes of season four of Miracle Workers uh, right. has dropped today. Very exciting for those of us in the know. Is that a show you would recommend? <laughs> wow, wow, pointed so, comment. Is it the show a show we would recommend? It is a show right. that Jill and I have recommended multiple times. Yes. Right. Indeed. Wow, Peter. Wow. <laughs> I feel like these little barbs of comments just just poking well, through my, that's my great still then. suit. So yeah, next week we're gonna be reviewing Miracle Workers. Seasons No We're Not. We're going to be doing <laughs> the Scientology one. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Mission Impossible. Dun, 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 dun. You know we can still actually change the miracle workers. <laughs> can yeah. we? I'm sorry. I have already changed the and updated the header for, on Facebook. I don't think I have the ability to do that again. <laughs> we haven't put it through the committee. Right. That's well, interested in miracle workers. Wait, I think yeah. we should talk about it later. Hang on. One question though, Peter. Have you seen any of the Mission Impossible movies? <laughs> I've seen at least two. <laughs> Find out next week which two Peter has seen and why she's con why she's confused as fuck about how this has turned into the Fast and the Furious of action hero <laughs> franchises. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I must admit I'm also quite far behind on my um, Mission Impossible How did awareness? Simon Pegg go from a nerdy computer guy to literally the same level of secret agent that Tom Cruise was in the previous ones? Yes. Oh yep. my god. And how? Why was Jeremy Renner only in one movie? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um Alice oh. Ganorga is saying that there's before in this season two. I'm impressed. I actually quite enjoyed before in this. Um I wasn't expecting it to get a season two. Yes. Um yes. Next week we're doing uh, we'll be reviewing the Mission Impossible and going to see. Oh, oh what, what explodes across our screens next week. Barbenheimer. <laughs> yes. Oh, Peter, you look so pained. 
<laughs> I'm really excited about half of what we're doing to bring yes. you that. Because we have to go and see uh, the... Because we have to. The big, because we have to. The big bombshell uh, movie next Tuesday. We won't be uh, streaming on Tuesday. You'll get the special time of Wednesday next week. We'll be, yes. uh, be doing uh, Mission Impossible and trying to keep our, ourselves contained <laughs> for the week Ooh. after when we'll get to do Barbenheimer. Yes. <laughs> I yes. know that I know that Peter's very excited about Barbie and not so much about Oppenheimer, but that's why I want to see. Uh, wait, which one are we going to do first? Half of it has to be Barbie, or half of it has to be Oppenheimer. How about most of it is Barbie, and we give a passing <laughs> mention to Oppenheimer at the end? I really don't know how we're going to do a double feature podcast. This I did say that like, like fairly big things. <laughs> it's going to go for at least three hours. It's going to be much more structured. It's like five minutes each. You have to have notes ready and go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we probably will need oh, to we'll get be a little, little more. We'll get a, I'll have a dice roll or something and like I'll I'll paint the, the opposite sides of it, like one black and one pink, and I'll roll it and that'll be which film each person talks about for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Chaos the, engine. The possibility that Jill doesn't get to talk about Barbie would be. Yeah, it's like Jill, you have five minutes on Oppenheimer. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Oppenheimer forever. Mm. Yep. And Jill, I know that you're thoroughly enjoying the the Barbie uh, looks that are currently being served to us on red carpets and pink carpets everywhere. I think Indeed. they're called Lukes, which is L E W K S. Oh, they are Lukes for sure. Like the recreations from like couture houses making Barbie costumes from the 90s is just like, I'm like, oh my God, I have that doll. I recognize that. Oh my goodness. And yeah, she did uh, Totally Hair Barbie just recently. And totally like, Hair Barbie. Fuck yeah. It was like, it's the German. It was one. a doll. It was the <laughs> Barbie was like the longest hair they'd ever given her. Um, was and... it one that you were meant to cut? Yes, you could cut it. She had like a Velcro out. strip and then you could stick more, you could stick extensions on and you could cut it and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Oh, but wow. uh, my favourite was like one of the most recent ones where it was Earring Magic Barbie because I totally forgot that I had that one until my sister was like, oh, we got that. And then I like looked closer at the outfit. I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. It was like this pink pleather dress with like mesh on the top and she had this cute little belt and came with earrings and then it came with earrings for for the for your size too so you could like have so you could dress like barbie. barbie yeah so yeah. i'm now just looking at totally hair barbie and oh my god yes. totally hair barbie just unlocked a memory for me right oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> cool. the ads core memory unlocked <laughs> so if uh if anyone's following me on instagram you will see my progress i'm currently making um margot's uh, best day ever dress from the movie and i'm going nice. to wear it to the premiere next monday oh yay yeah. Yeah. Woo. very excited and so, yes look out for and unfortunately we managed to completely not get any fucking tickets to that premiere because it is the single hottest ticket it's in town hot, hot, at the moment ticket. i basically had to kick and scream and threaten suicide to get those tickets but oh. i got them <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like so I, I haven't seen people lose their shit for a premiere as <laughs> as much as this in a very long time. Uh, I, I, yep, and <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. Like it is literally a hotter ticket than having Tom Cruise in town doing the fucking Mission Impossible. I know. Uh, yeah, like opening. on his birthday. Oh, yeah, was it? Yeah, it was yeah. his birthday wow. and everything. And I was like, okay. And they did fireworks and a whole lot. And people were like, yeah. Anyway, when's Barbie coming out? <laughs> <laughs> admittedly that wasn't a 5,000 seat theater so i guess maybe yeah. it's easy to fill you know get the tickets to that but anyway yeah look you know uh, have have fun out there get on along to whichever one you wish to go to see and which one you want to do first and everyone understands that you got to go and see oppenheimer first at a matinee and then go go <laughs> for a bottomless mimosa brunch and then go see barbie it's how it works it's, it's just how it works <laughs> Yeah. Um, I also want to take uh, the opportunity from a uh, a nerd perspective to say that today has been a good day for X-Men nerds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all saw the Wolverine costume, but did we see the Ken trailer? <laughs> no. No. Uh, Wait, was it, didn't Ken he sing a song? Yet. He sings a song, doesn't he? <laughs> 
I believe so. Uh, I'm going to go and watch it after we're done here. Oh, great. Um, um, yes, thank you so much for joining us. Yes. I'm just going to check if there's anyone to, to raid. There is nobody live at the moment, yeah, so right. we can't yeah, raid no, anybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Go and see uh, Mission Impossible. We'll talk about that next week. And while we're having a lot of fun going to see Oppen Barbie Bommenheimer. Bommenheimer. <laughs> Barbie, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. One movie is uh, going to bomb and the other one's just Barbie. <laughs> Barbie. She's the bomb. Oh, <laughs> I got nothing. What was it? One move, one's a movie about an atomic bomb and the other one's about an atomic blonde. <laughs> That's a good one. There you That's go. not bad. <laughs> nah. Okay, we, we've got so many fucking uh, titles for this this thing. Uh, thanks for everyone in the chat. We'll see you all next time, okay? See you Wednesday. Bye. 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 Wanna live in a world full of heroes Now sit here counting zeros In a cubicle downtown I wanna look out my window See them flying And swing across the horizon As I cheer them on so proud See Power Girl keep staring at her face And call Colossus and have them teach me ways And then we'd exercise I'd be one of the guys When martial arts from my fist and wall Call down the rub and teach her all my songs oh, I, I wanna live in a world full of heroes Not cooking up these heroes At my parents' restaurant now I wanna yell out of Avengers a symbol Not order yeah, we're right up cheeky now Say that my frost and have her read my mind Or Magdalena, her artifacts I find And now we catch a symphony So just be her and me Call Lucky Barn and arm wrestle for hours 